Welcome to the initial edition of A Closer Look. I'm Mark Shine, and you are Mark, Mark Miller. Miller. We got that taken care of, and we are both veterans, Mark Miller, mm -hmm. of the old uh, program we used to do here, Mark's Madness, and we managed to run off everybody who was uh, an <laughs> associate with us and worked as a co-host, and so we're here together, and our purpose is? Well, the purpose is to look at the games the previous week, just briefly, because by the time we come on, you've read about it, heard about it, and it's old news. We want to especially look forward to the games that are coming up the following weekend, preview those, give you something to look at, and also have some special segments as we go through the show with local interest and some rules and some other things. We hope it'll be a lot of fun. Okay, and then our initial thing we want to do today is we want to look at the new coaches in our area, Mark, and there are 14 new coaches in our area this year. We'll put them on the screen here and kind of give our viewers a chance to go through them a little bit. We can see Ethan Perther, Purser at Arcadia, Jeff Richards at Bluffton. Yeah, Jeff is a Bluffton guy. Went to high school there, went to the university, worked our Legends camp. He is very familiar with Bluffton. Kevin Klein has replaced the longtime and veteran coach Jerry Beauty at Defiance, Bill Speller at uh, Elida. And, you know, we want to mention Bill a little bit because of all the hardship that that Elida football program and school in general has faced over the last couple of weeks. And, and uh, I, I just, I, I feel this, Bill is the right guy at this time for that football team. He has done a great job of uh, bringing them together. Uh, Elida Strong is the logo you'll see around all year long. And, and uh, we hope that that hardship is over and they can get back to football and yet remember and pay homage to those very special teammates. Okay, we see Brian Colatroglio at Hopewell Loudon, Joe Kirkendall back at Lipsick. Yeah, Joe, you know, he got involved in the Elida job a little bit, decided to stay at Patrick Henry, but now kind of goes back kind of home. He was there before. What a great hire for Lipsick. They know what they're getting. Joe did a great job there before. That, that'll be a, a, a nice move for him. Okay, then we move on to the new coach at Lima Senior, Andre Griffin, who replaced Mike Fell. And then uh, after that, you can see as we go through the list, Jeff Weber at North Baltimore. Our new coach at Parkway is Shane Wellman. Herb Lane moves into Perry. Yeah, and Herb is familiar with the kids. He's coached in the middle school, different sports there. And I'll tell you, having Plummy Gardner return and Kobe Glover come out for football, that'll make him a better coach right off the bat. Certainly will. Frank Crea, very late hire at yeah. Shawnee, replacing John Carpenter. Well, the tough thing for Shawnee is this is their third third head coach in three years. Frank, a longtime assistant coach, but hey, Bill Garland was a longtime assistant coach at Bath, and he has done a great job there. Okay, we see Shane Wireman, Pat Garish at Van Buren. That's, good. That's a pretty good job right now. Shane Wireman at Waynesfield, and, mm -hmm. and then, of course, Mike Spees at uh, Wayne Trace. Yeah, replacing Bill Speller, who he, he assisted for years and years. The cool thing about Mike, he coached both of his sons. One just graduated from Bluffton, the other's still there, but he comes back, and he's on Mike's staff, so father-son combo on that staff. Okay. Mark, we uh, kind of want to get into some highlights from last year. We know the MAC had a very, very good finish to their season, as they always seem to. Two state champions. We're going to look at a highlight play from Coldwater and, of course, one from Fort Recovery. Let's start with our Coldwater highlight play. And this is kind of one of the seal the deal things as they defeated Canton Central Catholic 35 18 to finish 15 0. It's a nice two point conversion pass that will go uh, to Jake Hamilgarn, the quarterback, and they're off to a successful run to the state championship there. Yeah, and we also want to look at Fort Recovery, what a year it was. 33 to 14 over Mogador in their state championship game. And the play you're going to see is Caleb Martin, the quarterback, throwing it into the end zone for a score. You know, just last year, they made the playoffs for the first time ever in 14. and 15, they win a state championship. Could they repeat? It's Brent Kneecap's 12th, camp's 12th year. And one thing we were talking about before is they didn't start football until 95. They stayed with a few coaches, but Brent came on and they were very patient rewarded with a state championship in 2014. You know, that's an interesting point because we were talking about coaches a moment ago. And we don't, uh, we kind of looked at the list of them. Who do you think has the, the toughest job to go? I went with Andre Griffin from Lima I agree. Senior. I agree. Um, you know, he's, re he's a guy who comes from college, and you know mm -hmm. what that's like going from college into high school coaching. That's a difficult thing to do. And then, of course, he, he's uh, uh, replacing a very successful coach yeah. who revived the program at Mike Fell. Tough thing. Yeah, I mean, he scored a zillion points. He had great success, turned mm -hmm. it around in, in just a couple of years. This will be hard. The good guy, Andre's a good guy, and he'll work hard and he'll do the right things. But uh, college and high school, from a guy that had done it, uh, that is worlds of difference. Very, very difficult, but uh, we know he'll hang in there and do a good job. Let's move in and look at each of our conferences there and kind of get a preview of what we're going to look at. We'll start with the MAC state championship teams. This is their finish from a year ago. 
And you can see, of course, state championship teams for Coldwater and Fort Recovery. And Marion Local in the finals and had a difficult loss for them. So looking to who could succeed again this year. We know Coldwater graduated more than 20 seniors a year ago. Chip Otten and his staff always does a great job down there. And of course, they blew out Tenor in a foundation game last week. You mentioned Fort Recovery and their returning quarterback, a very veteran team with Caleb Martin. But Mike pick this year, the Marion Local Flyers. They've got 29 returning lettermen. It's a very hungry program, especially after the difficult loss in the playoffs last year. And of course, Minster setting out there with Jaron Stokes always does a great job. And will this be the year that a St. Henry Ann of Versailles, who has had successful teams in the past, come back this year? Going to take a look at the WBL next. And, you know, you got to start with Wapakoneta. Uh, 12 and 1 last year. This is Travis Moyer's third year. But over the last six years, they are 57 and 12. Certainly the top program in the WBL over the, that time period. They again have good size on the lines. They have skill to replace the guys that they lost. So you got to look at Walpock first. And then Ottawa Glandorf, 8 and 4 last year. Kenny Schreiner, 20th year. I tell him he's the old man in the WBL now. He doesn't like that. They're going to get good veteran leadership. They got Kaufman at quarterback, Nice at running back, and defensive back, and they will throw it all over the place. Odd for an OG team to say that, but they got the skill to pull it off. And then Bass, seven and three, missed the playoffs by just a smidge. Bill Garland in his fourth year. They return really good skill players, Sullivan and Gross in that backfield. Six offensive and six defensive starters, both back on both sides of the ball. You got to take a look at Salina, seven and two last year in the league, and Elida. How much uh, can they rebound and pull together and have a great year? Moving on to the NWC, it was Delphus Jefferson's year a, a year ago, and they certainly will be one of the favorites this year for Chris Summers, 18-5 and five in his three years there. Uh, this will be his third year there. He's got his quarterback back in Jay Stockwell and a veteran team. John Zerby does a great job at Spencerville. They lost a lot of players, have about half of their starters returning. I'm looking at Ada this year, and you can see that they had a good, pretty good year last year, four and three in conference play. Bob Owen has nine starters back on offense, nine starters back on defense. Could this be their year? Looking for a dark horse. How about Allen East and Mike uh, Abbey's team? Uh, they have a good chance to improve. They open up with a difficult Van Buren team, but then they go on the road to games that are winnable at Perry, at Waynesfield before opening up a big league conference game in week four with Jefferson. We'll see how Allen East Mustangs do this year. Moving over to the Blanchard Valley Conference, Macomb, 12 and two. Chris algie has been up there 19 years, always has a really good team and they have lots and lots of offense. But they also had the second best defense in the area, gave up just over 10 points a game. They returned the player of the year in Abbott. Anytime you got the best player in the league coming back, you gotta be picked to win it. But let's not forget Liberty Benton, down year last year at six and four for Tim Nichols. But 10 and 0, the two years prior to that, they missed the playoffs for the first time in five years. So they will have to be reckoned with and Lipsick, we talked about Joe Kirkendall coming back. Is this his first year or his seventh year? We're not sure, but it's his second tour of duty. They did lose Gavin Cup. He's down there with the Buckeyes, but they have been to the playoffs seven years in a row. Expect year number eight. Northwest Central Conference now looks to be a four-team race. Fort Laramie and Lehman, of course, uh, always picked near the top. Lehman has a very difficult schedule to start out with. They have Fort Recovery and at Minster for their first two games, and we'll see how they get through those heading into conference play. Josh Spencer at USB has 17 starters back from a team that was six and four a year ago. They open up at Ada. There's an interesting uh, game for week one. Riverside, eight offensive starters back, good line play. And of course, we'll see how the uh, Pirates finish up this year as well. We want to look at the track, but mostly because of Lima Senior, Finley a little bit, but you know, uh, again, Lima Senior, we talked about Andre Griffin being there, 9-3 and three last year. They led all teams in the area with over 41 points a game, but they have to replace a lot of talent. Gone are names like Gordon, Stafford, Lyles, Flowers. That is some firepower. Toledo Central Catholic in the state finals two years in a row. Expect them to have a strong team again this year. And St. John's on a pretty good year last year brings almost everybody back. And so those Toledo teams will be tough on Lima Senior. Okay, Mark, now that we've had a chance to run through all of the, the teams and kind of look at the leagues and conferences and so on, we thought we would make a list of top players that are returning. And obviously, we, we can't get to all of them. We started out with 10. We actually ended up with 11. Mm -hmm. So let's go through our top players first of all. I know you want to start first. All right, Logan Spire. Logan is a junior from Arlington. He's a defensive end, number 51 there, making a sack against Anna. 6'4", 240 pounds. He is a force. He's an early commit to Miami University. Second will be Trent Heights from Kenton High School. Trent's their quarterback. He's a third-year player at Kenton. 
And uh, when you have your quarterback back for three years, and obviously you can see he can run the football as we see here. He throws the ball well, too. We'll see how he plays at Kenton. Cole Harmon is a junior running back from Elida. Number three, he's a 5'9", 170-pound guy. He can run it. Here's a run against Kenton. Shows good agility. Ran for almost 1,100 yards, 13 touchdowns. He also catches it. He also returns kickoff. We're going to look at Jaden Walker from Lima Senior High School. And certainly when you're a running coach, as Coach Griffin has been through his college career, you want to look at what he can do here. He catches a little swing pass. Jaden Walker, one of the top running backs in the area. And of course, well, have to kind of carry a Spartan team, which as Mark said, lost a lot of good players. Another running back from St. Mary's is Eric Spicer. Eric is a 5'10", 175 pound senior. Here's a run against Shawnee. He had over 1,200 yards rushing. He will get lots of carries. 194 last year, probably even more this year. And another uh, Western Buckeye League player, Bo Gross from the Bath Wildcats. Bo's a fullback, he's a linebacker here. We see him making a run last year against Elida, a weight room fanatic. He's a really tough young man, a good player. Landon Hall from Wapakoneta. Made a lot of notice last year at linebacker. Will also be their key running back this year. 6'2", 210, had nine tackles for loss. Here's one of them against Kenton. State wrestler, he will go both ways and be very important to that Wapak team. Mark mentioned Malachi Abbott a moment ago from Macomb, one of those quarterbacks that can do a little bit of everything. He throws it well, he runs it well. You can see here making this run against the Liberty Benton Eagles for a touchdown, Malachi Abbott from Macomb. Hunter Bentley is a running back from Jefferson. They're number 32, he's 5'8", 160 pounds, rushed for over 1,500 yards and 23 touchdowns. This is a TD run against Ada and a long one. Part of that uh, multi-headed attack that Chris Summers has over there, but he will get the ball often and do good things with it. Well, we always seem to call those guys skill players who run the football. How about a skilled player who's 6'6 and 290 for the Marion Local Flyers? Uh, this is John Dirksen. He's a junior. Watch him bury this guy in pass protection here in just a moment. One of the dominant offensive line players and one of those guys that uh, is going to play on college football on Sunday or on Saturdays in the future. Well, he's got an offer from BG and <laughs> yeah. expect lots more to come in. He is the real deal. Lastly, Caleb Martin from Fort Recovery, the senior quarterback. 6'2", 200, threw for 2,500 yards, 22 touchdowns, rushed for five more. Here's a pass in the state championship game. He broke records for a state championship game in that division. 25 completions, 385 yards, five touchdowns. He's a Toledo, that hurts me to say that, <laughs> Toledo commit. And now those 11 guys, four of those guys, Spire, Harmon, Gross, and Martin, work the Legends Camp with there you and I go. out at Elida. They are great guys, and we could start a team with those four guys. Absolutely that is for good. sure. All right, got, got a question I want to throw at you. Uh, we get a chance to see you know, two teams a week on our Friday mm -hmm. night telecast that we do. We get to watch highlights and so on, but we don't get to see each one of these players live and in person. Is there a player in here you want to see live and in person? Yeah, of that list, there's only two that I haven't seen, and that's Spire. I saw him on the hoof. He looks good. Yeah. And, and the other one is Abbott, Malachi. If you're player of the year in any league, uh, you're pretty good. And I would like to see him play because I guess he can do it all. Really agreed. like to see that as well. All right, we have a special segment we want to do here called the question mark segment. I thought that up. All right, the question mark segment. And this week in our question mark segment, it is what are the new rules we'll see in high school football this year? Mark Miller. All right, in 2015, a lot of the rule changes revolved around safety of the players. It also uh, clarified the differential in the 30 point rule, when the clock stops, when it doesn't, all that stuff. This year, the rules are, you are now allowed to wear a clear or white mouthpiece, mouth guard. It used to be that's the only kind they had when we played, but then they went to the dark color black so the referees could see it. Now you're allowed to wear white and clear. Number two, football gloves must be S-F-I-A or N-O-C-S-A-E. I don't know what any of that means, but that's the specifications. <laughs> All I know is here's the difference. It will cost you more to buy gloves now because they have to have those letters on them. The third rule is no clipping in the free blocking zone any longer. First of all, what's the free blocking zone? The free blocking zone is four yards in either direction down the line of scrimmage from the ball and three yards behind and in front of the line of scrimmage. That's the free blocking zone. Basically, you could do just about anything in there before. Now you're not allowed to dive on a kid's legs. I always thought that was a mm -hmm. crazy rule anyway to come up with and let some kid jump on the back leg of the legs of another kid. Lots of injuries. They have done a good job cleaning that up. Point of emphasis. Legal pants and legal pads. NFL, please listen. You worry about injuries? Make them wear pads. You expose the knees. We get shattered kneecaps. We get all kinds of stuff. These guys will wear their pads. Fewer injuries. Good job by the, the guys making the rule changes. If you could add one rule to that list, it would be? 
If I could add one yeah, rule you, you to high to school add, football, you get to add one rule. Two hand touch on all quarterbacks. <laughs> that would have been my rule. Yeah. Okay, and we know why. I'm in favor <laughs> of I'm in favor of modifying the lightning rule. And we've all been at games where the lightning is 30 miles away. We look on our phone, there's nothing anywhere nearby. We have clear skies. We're still waiting for 30 minutes. I'm in favor of modify. I want people to be safe. Yeah. Like to modify the lightning rule. And in track, there should never be a lightning rule because the lightning bolt hits 30 yards away from those guys running 100 meter dash. They're going to make you same bolt look <laughs> like a 90 year old lady at the mall. <laughs> Got state okay. record. Yeah, keep, keep moving, man. Keep moving. All right. All right. In a moment, we're going to show the uh, list of games that we will preview here, and we'll show this weekend on WSN WTLW. But before that, Mark, what are the opening game that you would like to see this weekend? Uh, looking forward to see it competition-wise. I think a great one's going to be Fort Recovery at Sydney Lehman. Fort Recovery finished 13 and two. Sydney Lehman seven and five. They've been to the playoffs nine of the last 11 years. We already talked about Fort Recovery's recent success. They played twice last year. Fort Recovery got the best of them both times, 36-0 in the opener and in the playoffs, 20-3. Both of these teams are looking for league titles. They're looking for deep playoff runs. I think this is a great interleague opening game matchup. My choice is going to be the Kenton Wildcats uh, hosting the Coldwater Cavaliers. Um, I think this is one of those games we see what does Coldwater bring back. We know that they have been very successful. We also they graduated 20-plus seniors. Yeah. What do they bring back? How does Coach Chip out and deal with that? And how do these guys play on the road on the Friday mm -hmm. night lights and all those type of things? And Kenton, are they back to being the Kenton they have been before? We've talked about their quarterback, Trent Heights. He's back. We know that they brought all their receiving core back from a year ago. Is this the Kenton team that we're used to seeing in the past? And we're going to go for that. A good opener. Yep. Yep. Okay, our broadcast schedule this week, you can see on the screen here, as we're going to put that up for you, um, PG and Grove, Van Buren, Allen East, Minster, Fort Laramie. You and I will be doing the Lima Senior Middletown game. Looking forward to that. Yeah, what a, a game. A lot going on this week down yeah. at Spartan Stadium. Uh, they're hosting the 1996 state championship team with their 13-1 record. The Central High School team from 1946 it was 10-0. They're going to retire Travis Walton's jersey, the number 12 jersey that he wore as a Lima senior basketball player, and all the work that goes on down around Spartan yeah. Stadium. With they're trying to get the, the new park all put together down there. And, of course, you can see Elida and Lima Central Catholic on Saturday night. Mark, show number one. It's we'll see if there's a show number two. If there's a show number two, we'll be back here with you next week. We appreciate you watching. You've been watching High School Football on WOSN. <laughs>